three classes. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that I want to say is, is that this um, legislation uh, regarding the uh, conservative government's uh, FATCA deal with the United States should not be uh, part of an omnibus uh, budget bill that uh, in particular that is being rushed uh, through Parliament here in the last uh, few weeks of, of our sitting uh, in June. Uh, this deal will affect a lot of people. It will affect approximately uh, a million or so uh, deemed Americans uh, living in Canada. Many of them are, are Canadian citizens. Uh, there are examples uh, of people who are accidentally Americans. For example, Canadians from Canadian border towns who were born in uh, a U.S. hospital because that was the closest hospital. I know a priest from New Brunswick uh, who is in exactly that situation, uh, right, lived right on the border uh, in New Brunswick. And then there are uh, parents who mistakenly thought that they lost their U.S. citizenship because they became, uh, or upon becoming a Canadian citizen. Uh, and uh, then their child who was born in Canada, uh, has never been to the United States, but then uh, uh, finds out that they have uh, U.S. citizenship and are subject to, uh, to the obligations under the legislation that we're debating today. Um, there has been real no information campaign from the government to let Canadians know uh, how the uh, Conservatives' uh, FATCA deal with the United States will, will affect them. And, and I think that's something that uh, uh, perhaps should have been done uh, over uh, or even before this legislation was considered so that uh, uh, we parliamentarians as their representatives could hear from them uh, after they had been properly informed. I think that's the way accountability in, 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 uh, of the government to parliament to the Canadian people through Parliament, that's how it should work. I think inform informing Canadians uh, uh, first is, is very important. And what limited information is out there has uh, sometimes been uh, misleading. For example, the government have, has boasted that registered accounts, such as the uh, RESPs and RDSPs, are not uh, reportable. In other words, the CRA will not be reporting them to the United States. But in fact, uh, even though Canadian uh, banks won't report those accounts. The uh, Canadian individuals who have U.S. Citizenship, citizenship will still have to fill out forms and report uh, those accounts to the IRS in the United States if the value, total va aggregate value of all of accounts uh, exceeds $10,000. Uh, and it's, it's uh, unfortunate that the IGA, uh, uh, in the negotiations leading to the IGA, that, that wasn't dealt with. Uh, if these Canadians don't report the, uh, their accounts to the IRS, they face U.S. penalties of up to $100,000 or 50% or of the balance of the account, whichever is greater uh, per viola violation. So under this uh, deal, Mr. Chair, the uh, uh, CRA will share personal tax information on Canadians with the, with the IRS. Uh, but uh, our officials, our government has been unable to tell us and, and the Canadian people on a granular level exactly what information will be shared. Uh, what we do know is that under this deal, uh, the CRA will punish Canadians who don't provide the Canadian government with their U.S. tax identification number. In mo most cases, it will be the Social Security number in the U.S. And uh, when Canadians do provide this information to the CRA, the CRA will then uh, hand it over to the uh, IRS. Uh, the CRA already collects information on Canadians' income, of course. Uh, it's part of filing taxes and, and all of our information about all of our registered accounts. But we don't know uh, in detail how much of this information the CRA will then pass on uh, to the IRS. So the, the Conservative government claims that, uh, that they will not, the government will not use this information to help the IRS go after uh, U.S. taxes on Canadian assets and Canadian income earned by Canadians. However, uh, the government is introducing a $100 penalty per violation for Canadians who don't provide their U.S. tax identification number to the CRA. But the CRA has no use for a U.S. tax identification number except to pass that number over to the U.S. government as uh, under the IGA. And so it's clear, uh, unfortunately, that our Conservative government has, has uh, signed a deal with the United States that has the Canadian government doing work for uh, the U.S. government, namely collecting information for the, for the IRS. 
Um, our, official, our officials have been unable to uh, give Canadians uh, granular details on how this deal will financially impact uh, Canadian citizens. Uh, and so they've been a unable to feed back uh, a full response to their representatives here in Parliament. Uh, another example, we know that uh, uh, RASPs, the Registered Education Savings Plans and the RDSPs, will be subject to U.S. taxes under this deal. But we don't know how much Canadians will have to pay in, in U.S. taxes on these accounts. One example where that's a problem is that if these accounts are being used uh, by Canadians to help pay for a child's education or help disabled Canadians avoid uh, poverty, th these accounts were not created to help the U.S. Treasury uh, pay down its, uh, its debts across the border. We know for another uh, question is we know that Canadian spouses of so-called U.S. persons in Canada will also be affected if they have joint accounts and that these joint accounts will be subject to U.S. taxations. But Canadian officials haven't been able to tell us if the entire account would be subject to U.S. taxation or just a portion of it. So there's a lot about this deal that will be put into practice that we don't know. Parliament's study of the Conservatives' FATCA deal has been rushed and we have, haven't been afforded the time or resources to provide proper oversight, uh, listen to constituents who are informed, and fulfill our responsibility uh, to them. If this section of the bill passes, uh, we will have passed an agreement into law without properly understanding how it will work and how it will affect Canadians. And that is why uh, the Liberal Party opposes part five uh, of this bill. Um, I will, perhaps at this time, uh, uh, I will wait until we get to the, uh, the point in the agenda where we reach the other Liberal uh, amendments, and at that time I'll simply uh, move those amendments. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you for your comments. We'll go now to...